Hello and welcome to Big Bear Woodshop. Uh, in this series of videos I'm going to be making a teaching platform uh, which was uh, just a stand that a, a teacher that I work with could use to be able to reach um, her smart board in her room. Um, so first I start off by uh, cutting down the 2x4 frame. Uh, this is going to be around five and a half inches uh, off the ground um, and then approximately four feet deep and uh, about six feet long five five to six feet long um, so it's going to be uh, framed up at um, I guess you could call it joists or studs or whatever at 16 foot intervals um, uh, 16 foot, 16 inch intervals. Uh, I'm using my dad's miter saw here. Um, neither one of us uh, have really done a lot with these types of tools before he got this, and I only used one one time before this project, and that one didn't have a cool cut laser on it. Um, when I was a kid, learning learning about this sort of thing from my dad, it was, you know handheld circular saw or a uh, just a straight-up hand saw so I lost the video that I had of actually assembling the frame but now you can you can see how it's put together um, and these are two by six uh, plank boards that are gonna go um, on there for walking uh, now I also didn't have video of this um, so I not sure why but I had a lot of trouble with that um, I did not buy enough two by sixes so I had to go back to the store and buy some more and then I decided to shorten the platform by around four inches rather than buying um, another two by six to cut it down now I didn't want to take the entire thing apart and put it back in the um, in the miter saw so I thought I would try to uh, work with a uh, my reciprocating saw after getting the first notch out with circular saw but that worked for the first one but it was not gonna work with the others so then I decided to just take the circular saw and uh, try to cut it vertically like this and it worked okay not the safest thing in the world but got the job done uh, and so then once that's all done I can um, put that inboard back on and get everything all lined up nicely uh, for the final assembly yeah the first time I did this I was putting in pilot holes um, with another, you know, with my corded drill and I was countersinking the holes and then at some point I realized, you know, I've got, this is just framing pine, I really don't need to countersink the holes, they'll countersink themselves, so I cut that out. Uh, you see I'm using the speed square to kind of prop up those boards because the, the, uh, plywood that I'm using as a tabletop had a bit of a bow in it it was I guess a little bit older and bent so I'm just making sure everything's leveled up um, to the end boards and you see me doing a lot of measuring because I'm not again like I've said before real comfortable with with doing this and my abilities some just kind of starting out. And then there we go. So now I'm going to line up all of the plank boards um, so that I can get them measured to to fit exactly. I, I, I know roughly how big it should be and my, my math tells me how big it should be but I want to make sure um, just with the final product that I'm doing it totally right. 
just making sure that those top boards are square all along there and square to the end. And I've got lots of measuring. And I'll do the same thing from the other end. And then I went ahead and was going to use that drywall square to run everything. But then I just had the thought, you know, I, j I just don't trust that this is all straight, and perfect. So I decided to just mark them all individually. And it ended up being quite a bit different. So I'm glad that I did. And this ended up just having uh, a lot of repetition to each piece. Uh, now I'm using my speed square as a guide for the circular saw, lining everything up, and then I can pull the speed square tight and run my, just run the edge of the saw's um, guide or guard or whatever you call that along it to make sure that I stay straight on the line. So I want to make these as square cuts as possible. And having made sure I measured really well to begin with, then this this bit here is just, you know, zip, 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 each one quickly. But like I said before, a lot of repetition. Okay, now I'm going to mark for the um, where I'm going to be able to put the screws down through through to the I guess you'd call them like floor joists is the same idea and for this I decided to just mark the ends um, and I believe I come back through with a straight edge. Now it's been a while since actually doing this work and I may have to go back and retract what I have said, but getting this all nice and straight and even. Yeah, so I do use the straight edge because this one, um, for one, doesn't have to be as precise as the middle um, or as the, the cutting off the ends. And I know that if it, that those joists are straight so I can go through with them. And I was just checking there to make sure. And everything looked good, so... Now those lines are done. Well, I guess I have this line over here to do get left. And I, I see that that third from the end joist is sticking up a little bit. That'll straighten out once it's all um, screwed down. Now you'll see in a little bit, I'll move the camera so it uh, gets a closer shot of this. I'm using a Forstner bit to countersink the screw holes. so that I can put the screws in and then plug them, plug the holes with a dowel so that there aren't any screws visible. That was kind of a, the idea behind, behind what I wanted to do here. Um, and I, I know a lot of people had said to me, well, you know, you could just, um, you know, do it a lot more. You could do it a lot, a lot easier, you know, just slapping it together. But I wanted something that would look nice in this teacher's classroom. And I've I've made the marks for the where the joists are. And now I'm using this tape measure to kind of give me a guide so that the screw holes are all kind of kind of in a straight row. Um, it's not perfect, and I, I wasn't intending it to be perfect. 
Um, but it got the job done really well. And as I've said before, oh, yeah, I had to stretch my back out a bit. I'm uh, on the taller side of things, six foot seven, and so doing a lot of these, a lot of the work that requires being bent over, or hunched over, is just a little rough. Ruffle my back, so every once in a while you'll see me do that pause and kind of stretch my back and get a little more comfortable. Which is also why I decided to stack these up as I worked with them. Because then it would get easier as it went. And just lots and lots of repetition. And here we come to the end. Uh, we'll continue in part two. If you like to see how this goes, um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And you'll get updates when the next videos come out. Uh, I also like the video. It just doesn't do anything other than let me know that you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.